you have been completely lied to. Everything you thought you knew about life sciences is just wrong. Huh? Yes. You probably think that life sciences is hard or boring. Or you probably just think that it is only for geniuses. <clears throat> And in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips that actually are going to make sure that you at the end of the video are able to see that life science is not only easy, but it's also fascinating. Now stick till the end of the video to hear the bonus tip, which is a tip that I actually didn't have in my script that I realized today when I wrote my test. The truth starts now. Hey. <laughs> Hello, hey, yalla. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know me, I am Kwekezo and I'm a medical student at the University of Free State. And I actually have a video for physical sciences where I said how I got over 90 for physics, which I did, and how I got over 90 for mathematics. And now I'm giving you a video on how to get over 90 for life sciences, for which for most of my terms, I maintained an average of over 90 for life sciences. For argument's sake, in my prelim exams, I was in an extra class facility or center rather called Karabo Center for Mathematics and Science. And those who were in that extra class, I hope, actually please speak on the comments there. They will tell you how difficult the tests and exams there were. They were by far more difficult than any exam that you could write in school. But for a life science exam there for my prelims, I actually got 91.3% there, putting me number two out of the people that are there are exceptional. In this video, I'm going to share with you actually the tips that I find are quite important in ensuring that I always maintain a high standard when it comes to life sciences. And by the end of this video, you too should be able to always make sure that you get 90% all the time. For some of you watching this at the time that is recorded, it is a few days, if not a day before prelims. And I'm hoping that these tips will carry you either for your prelim exams or at least implement them for your finals because I promise, I promise they will do to you the world of good. So the first thing that you need to make sure of is to have your exam guideline. That is very important of a resource. I've been stressing it for physics, I've been stressing for mathematics, I stressed it for life orientation and for those that have been watching all my videos will tell you that I've always stressed it. And it is equally as important for life sciences if not more important. Spermatogenesis, your oogenesis, your definitions of the law of independent assortment. You can look at that definition from a teacher's board, you can look at it from memorandums, you can look at it from a textbook, but it actually is also on the exam guideline. And they tell you the exact definition that they require from you in an exam setting. And that is the definition that I used to write in all my tests and exams. And it ensured that I got the marks that I had to get. If I know that a definition is five marks, I knew that oogenesis is perhaps five marks. If I write the definition that is given in the exam guideline, then I know that I am sure to get a full five marks because the people that set the exam guideline are the people that set the exam. So use your exam guideline and make sure that you always have it and utilize it to your advantage. Now, obviously, you know that making uh, doing past papers is something quite important. I mean, we always say past papers, past papers, past papers, but sometimes you don't want to do a full past paper, like when you don't really understand a concept fully. Now, let's take for argument's sake, I understand human reproduction, but I do not really quite understand um, osmoregulation, what do you call it, the, the endocrine system or the human nervous system. What I can do is instead of doing a full past paper, I can use the mobile app which is not sponsoring this video, but I can use the mobile app to look at these past papers that come by part. So by questions and by topic. And it's something that helps you build your confidence to be able to do a full past paper once you feel like, okay, I've done and I've consolidated the entire life sciences. So the second tip that I have for you is to download the mobile app and use it to do past papers each and every time you're done doing a topic and then you test yourself like that. Now the next tip is actually a concept that I learned when I got here, which is a concept of a brain dump. I've never done this before. And then I started uh, studying with this other girl who's one of the smartest people that I know. And she started a thing where each time we're done studying, or maybe after 30 minutes of studying, she would say, let's do a brain dump. And she will take out pieces of paper, close down every single book, and you just write everything you think you've learned in the past 30 minutes, every single word. If you're doing uh, spermatogenesis, you take down a piece of paper, you say the entire spermatogenesis well you don't know it's fine you leave it like that so you dump everything out of your brain into paper and then after that you check now you mark what is wrong you mark what is right everything that is not there uh that is supposed to be there you write it in red pen to say okay i missed this or you mark those that are right in red pen and this concept of a brain dump 
is actually very helpful because it always makes sure that you're not just studying to finish but you're studying to understand and ensure that a concept yeah can avail you know so yeah the concept of a brain dump is something that will help you and insane lot because i only tried it this year i just learned it now but i can say that it has done for me very good and you consider the previous concept called a brain dump it actually aligns or lines in with what i'm now talking about which is one of the most important if not the most important thing when it comes to studying a subject like life sciences which is active recalling now it is one thing to actually walk around and say spermatogenesis is a process by which this is converted to this fertilization is uh, the combination of a sperm cell and an egg cell to form a, a diploid yeah i don't know something like that i forgot no i can't tell you the wrong definitions try to remember forget it was two years back but try i think fertilization is the is it a mutation but yeah it is when a haploid sperm cell and a haploid egg cell or ovum combine to form a tabloid zygote i think nice but yeah so it is one thing to say this while shouting out like that and it's another thing to actively recall it which is writing it down on paper because if i write it down on paper and i get something wrong then i'm able to mark it and see where i got it wrong and in the exam, I'll be able to remember, ah, it was on the left side of the page there when I put that X and that's something that I was wrong. So actively recalling something, making sure that each time you try to remember processes, concepts, you write them down, you actively do it. Don't just passively say them, actively write it down. Another useful thing that you can do is you can develop a relation of colors. And what I do is I have a very consistent relation of colors that I've been using since I was in grade 12, I think was it now it's been a long time ago but i hadn't really made that mental relation of it so even last year when i was studying uh, a bsc with a biochemistry at uct i had obviously processes that involve enzymes and each time i write the name of an enzyme or i draw an enzyme i use the color purple purple pen purple crayon whatever I use the color purple so even now when i write about enzymes i use the color purple and this making of relations with colors allows me to be in an exam and when I sit and think on my paper there, I remember writing a process and there was that enzyme that I wrote across like this, it was in purple, phospholipase C. So me always making sure that I use that relation of colors. For example, I'll, I'll actually attach a clip here. The book that I'm using this year, whenever I write about calcium, Ca2+, calcium ion, I write it in red pen. Whether I write it in a paragraph, I write it in a diagram, but wherever there is calcium, I write it in red pen so i know that if i forget exactly what i wrote in the entire thing but i remember that there was something in red i know that something in red is calcium so making this relation of colors helps me remember sometimes when i don't quite remember or recall something as exactly as i should now the most important tip by far which is actually the one tip that made me want to create this video because i had someone who texted me the day before they wrote their june exam for life sciences and they were like dude i'm trying to understand hearing i'm trying to understand balance it does not make sense and i tried to explain them in this way that i'm about to teach you now making a mental picture and a visualization of the entire diagram and seeing it in a systematic way so as an example i will use the ear for this example for argument's sake when you look at the process of the ear, it's very simple for you to cram the entire thing, to cram uh, sound waves, enter the, the, the bina, they go into the auditory canal, the tympanic membrane. That's just you cramming words. But now what I do is I make sure that I have the mental image in my mind and I can see even already in my head, there is the pina there. So it enters through the pina, the sound waves. And then right after it enters, you can even imagine something as simple as maybe if you were to I don't know, put a drop of water, how will it travel? If you were to, uh, I don't know, throw a stone inside, it'll firstly travel past the pina, go into the auditory canal. It has to pass through the tympanic membrane, but now you know what the tympanic membrane does. It changes that sound wave to a vibration. As it goes through the tympanic membrane, it goes into the, uh, I don't know if it's the ear now or the middle side of the ear, I forgot that part. But as it enters there, it goes to the three bones, the hemma and balance therapy has HAS. Those hammer and stirrup, they stimulate the vibration and sends it to, is it the cochlea, I think. Being able to make that mental image, see that, okay, right after that, it goes into the cochlea. Inside the cochlea, it moves out and goes to the cerebrum. Why? Because you know the cerebrum is responsible for, is, is it the one responsible for hearing? 
the cerebellum is for balance. I think hearing is the cerebellum. Is it the cerebrum? Yeah, cerebrum. A medical student just approved that it's the cerebrum. <laughs> so yes, so yes, um, it goes to the cerebrum. And being able to look at something in such a systematic way is for me what makes everything simple. Like for now, for example, the thing that I'm studying right now, I'm going to attach a picture of it as, uh, again. So there's something to do with neurotransmitters uh, during skeletal muscle contraction or muscle contraction in general where something goes past a presynaptic cleft and into you know, the presynaptic neuron to a postsynaptic neuron it passes through a synaptic cleft in my head already i can already see that i drew an action potential i wrote the number one i wrote calcium in red right after calcium what happens is there is that synaptic uh, vesicle which releases neurotransmitters which go down to synaptic cleft which will then bind to collagenic receptors on the postsynaptic neuron and 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 I didn't have to cram the process. There is a process that exists that is written down in words, but me having this picture in my mind allows me to be able to explain it in a systematic way. So that is what I expect from you. That is what I'm trying to teach you. And that is the most important way to make sure that you always get 90% for life sciences. Another little bonus tip, which is actually something quite short. It is to make sure that you answer what is required and not what you think is being asked. I repeat, answer what is asked and not what you think is being asked. This is a mistake that most people make. This is a mistake that even I made today in the test. I just wrote a test, I think over an hour ago. It was, yeah, an hour, 30 minutes ago. I was writing this test where only as I was done, I was told, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. And I was like, damn it. And then I quickly fixed that mistake. But it is very important to answer what is being asked of you, not what you think is being asked. Make sure that you read a question, you understand it very clearly. Especially in life sciences, one word can change everything. There's a difference between chromosome, a chromatid, chromatin network. There is a very big difference between simple words, meiosis, mitosis. That simple one letter, the E or the T, it can make you write the wrong thing. So you need to always make sure that you read the question carefully and answer what is asked and not what you think is being asked or what you want to be asked. And so, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I'm Bogetsu. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you watched it to this point and I hope that it will be helpful to you. Will you please do me a huge favor? Subscribe. Get there and Will you please subscribe? Because apparently 70% of the people viewing my videos are not subscribed. Where will we be? I don't know. But please subscribe. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. Share it with your grandmother's toes and peace. <laughs>